Hello, welcome back to the Archoria Pigments 3 tutorial. Uh, we're halfway through having a look at the arpeggiator and sequencer. In the last episode, we dealt with the basic functionality, and today we're going to have a look at some of the more advanced features. Just before we set off, um, I'll just direct you to the Patreon link, which is at the top of the description in this video. Uh, if you click on that and head over and have a look at my Patreon page, uh, that's an awesome way to help support me and my channel. Okay, onwards. Now, we're going to talk about randomize, but it's such a crazy topic that the only way that we can really track what's going on is if we reset the sequencer back to default. Oops. I'm just going to set this back to eight notes, make it a little bit more easy to follow. Let's say we want to set a completely random eight note sequence. Well, an easy way to do that is to click on this little die, set it to 100%, and now the pitch track is fully is set up to be fully randomized. And the way that we activate randomization is to click the regen button. Now then, what you've just seen is some light blue lines appear. Those are the new sequence lines. If I press a C on the keyboard, you're gonna hear the sequence as represented by these lines, not the visual representations of all these Cs. The reason it does that is because it's saying, this is what I'm currently doing. Do you want to lock this in place? If you think, yes, I like that sequence, click apply. And this is now our new baseline. That is the actual sequence. Now these little blue lines and the apply button don't make very much sense until we come down off 100%. If I set the randomization to 20% instead and reset all of our notes back to C, watch what happens now. You can't see any regen lines. The last one just popped its head up. So the randomization is now being performed in a very small zone around note C. And in fact, the sequencer can't get beyond probably only C sharp. It is plain D's, isn't it? But every time I press regen, it's randomizing the notes by this much, 23.6%, around its current static value. The moment I click apply, that becomes the new foundation. And so the only way that you can ever get up in, into the higher notes, there was no way it was ever going to get to E's or F's or G's. You can get there by clicking regen until you see the little blue lines pop up a little bit higher. See this uh, step four as a reasonably high zone and then click apply. It's a little bit like setting up multiple camps, climbing a mountain. You know, we've set up a new um, position from which we can kind of randomize above. It's obviously capable of going back down as well. There, so the step three just came down from an F sharp to an F. Now the pitch track has an extra feature, which is the chromatic scale, because we can actually constrain uh, the values that the sequencer will accept. If I set the sequencer scale to major, now it's only going to allow notes from the major scale. Now, again, the sequence is fundamentally based in C, but they're only offsets. It doesn't mean anything in itself. It's not only going to play C major, and it's not only representing Fs and Gs, they're, they're offsets. But they are offsets following the tone, tone, semitone, TTTS structure. And so what we get now when we randomize is a guaranteed scale that will fit within the constraints of the major scale. So every time I press regen, we're getting a major scale. And then click apply. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. If we go back into the sequencer scale um, sub window, this graphic at the bottom tells you what your candidate notes are and all the notes of the C major scale as we'd expect. But this chance thing is really important as well. It tells you what likelihood is 
that the uh, sequencer will randomize to a particular value. So it's more likely to pick the root and then the perfect fifth and then the major third over other notes. So it, it's kind of inherently musical in the way that it veers or kind of steers uh, towards notes that sound more consonant. And each scale has its own set of chance values. However, if we select custom, then we get to build our own completely bespoke scale. So we have high, mid and low for our three chances. And we can enable or dis disable any keys. And now having cr created this completely random scale, that's probably nothing and set us to random like regen, we've now got a scale following those rules. But there's more. In sequencer mode, we can also have it auto regen. Just wanted to set a new foundation. So I've set the sequence back to C. I'm gonna set the randomization to 50%. The apocalypse is raging outside. And I'm going to make it regen every bar. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to be play a bar of the song, which is two iterations of this sequence as you're currently looking at it. And at the end of that bar, it's going to generate a new sequence. So you can see the blue lines are being reset, being redrawn every two passes of this sequence, which is one bar. Set it to two bars, and now these blue lines will hang around for four iterations before resetting. Let's see where we're up to at the moment. That's our current sequence. Uh, according to our ridiculous custom scale, go back to major and uh, bring some sanity back to the world. Here's our new sequence. Plays that for four bars. And then there's a new sequence. Plays that for four bars. At 1 16th, you've basically got chaos. You can see how quickly it's resetting its notes. But there's more. You can actually lock individual steps. And now those steps won't be randomized. I'm clicking apply so that it updates the user interface and you can see that each of the steps that's locked is never moving. How about we completely decouple all of these tracks and make them run for different numbers of steps? Well, that's where polyrhythm comes in. So we turn polyrhythm on and now can you see all of the tracks are just jumped up to the end except pitch which is currently set to 8. So anything that I've explicitly set stays where it was. Basically every one of these tracks now has its own independent number of steps to complete one um, sequence. If we then start introducing some randomness in gate length and maybe a couple of slides, why not have some of this? Uh, I'll shift click trigger probability, bring them all down a little bit, get funky with our octaves and even mess with the velocities. And now good luck identifying any pattern in this. <laughs> oh, Archuria. It's wonderful. It's mad and wonderful.
Do you want to pull back slightly from that complete insanity? Well, we can have it periodically realign. Let's say every bar, it snaps back to the starting position so that everything begins counting again. So you can see on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So on the one, it's uh, resetting all of the all of the steps and jumping back to step number one. Last thing to show you today is the sequencer operating as an external MIDI trigger. So if I bring the volume of pigments down, press the key, we're not hearing anything. I'm going to head over to the uh, CZ over here. Separate synthesizer, that's what it looks like. So that's what we've got. I'm going to set its input to pigments MIDI out. Now, if I monitor enable CZ so that it can hear that output from pigments. So that's pigments playing the sequence and CZ generating the sound. Needless to say, this is a massive toy box. There is some really cool stuff to be had. When we get on to do our preset deep dives, I'll make sure to find something that really stretches the sequencer and gets some interesting effects coming out of it because it is one of the better implemented sequences I've ever seen, really, really deep. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next time. Thanks a lot for watching.